Okay, today we're going to be looking at our last type of algebra problem, which is uh, an equation that follows the form a times x plus b equals c. Um, so what these types of equations tell us is that we're multiplying some number a times whatever x is plus b. All right, so whatever, and because we know order of operations, we typically have to uh, add x and b together before we multiply it times a to get another number c. All right, um, these problems look a little weird because they have those brackets, but they're really not that much more confusing than anything we've done. Uh, what's kind of nice about these problems is there's actually multiple ways to solve them um, besides just the straight formula. So you can actually choose whatever method works best for you. All right, so we're just going to erase that for now. And I'm going to change my laser pointer because I really don't like that arrow. All right, so I'm going to start off the same way we normally do by showing how to solve these problems pictorially. Um, so right now, we're using this equation here, uh, 2 times x plus 3 equals negative 2. All right, so we want to start by drawing this. And it helps to think about what this part of the equation is telling you. This is saying that I have two groups of x plus 3, all right? So I'm going to start off by drawing my x tiles, and I know that I'm going to have two of those x tiles because I have two groups of x plus 3. So I'm going to start off by drawing my, rec my long rectangle, so I have x, and then I should have a second x because I have 2 times x plus 3, all right? So that's my two groups of x taken care of. Now I also have to take care of this plus 3. And again, I have two groups of positive 3. So uh, instead of drawing little boxes because it's a little hard on the iPad, I am just going to draw them little plus signs. So I have two groups of positive 3. All right. So now you can see that this part of the equation is being modeled by what I've drawn here because I have two groups of x plus 3. So I have two groups of x plus 3. All right? Uh, so overall, this is basically the same as 2x plus 6, if that helps you out. And we'll be getting to how that applies later when we're trying to solve these symbolically. All right? Uh, now we just have to draw my two negatives on the other side, which is nice and simple. OK. So now we want to get the x values by themselves. We need to get rid of these plus signs here. And just like always, to get rid of plus signs, what we want to do is the opposite of what we're already doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw in six negatives, and I'm going to try and pair them up with those plus signs to make it easy for me to see. And now I can just cross out all those zero pairs which is great, now I have the x's by themselves. But as you guys are well aware at this point, whatever I do to my left side of the equation, I also have to do to the right side of the equation. So I also need to add six negatives to this side. And I'm just going to keep them red so that you can see the difference between what I started with and um, what I have now. All right, so that's step one done. And I'm just going to redraw what I have. So I have my two x tiles by themselves, which is perfect, that's what I want, equals, and now I have on the right side of the equation, negative 8. All right? And I'm going to keep them in line with the x's because we know that that helps us later when we are trying to figure out what one x tile is. So now this is the same as 2x equals 8, which is great. Uh, that rhymes, that's awesome. And now all I have to do, just like we've done before previously, is circle one row of our set up here, and that will tell us what x equals. So here I see that x is the same as negative 1, 2, 3, 4, so x must be negative 4, and that is going to be my answer. So x is negative 4. All right, if I go back and put that into my equation, so if I put in here, and I'm not going to write this all out, but negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So that one worked out just great. Uh, so again, just to recap, all you have to do is draw two times, or this number here, groups of this equals this. And then you just solve it the way we normally do.
All right, let's move on to solving these uh, symbolically because it's a little bit trickier. All right, so we're going to look at this problem here, the 3 times x minus 8 equals negative 45. These problems, um, you can solve two different ways depending on what you're more comfortable with. Okay, so I'm going to start by solving what I think is the way that you guys will be most familiar with. All right. So remember that when we're doing algebra, whenever because we're working backwards, we want to follow the reverse order of operations. Um, so we want to always do whatever is, uh, well, just the reverse. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So remember, we always follow that SAMDEB. SAMDEB. Okay. So according to this, we want to do our addition and subtraction, uh, sorry, our addition and subtraction first, our multiplication and division second, and the last thing we want to do is our brackets. We don't, we're not multiplying x by anything here, just inside the brackets, all right? So based on SAMDEB here, the first thing we want to do is actually get rid of this 3, because technically we should save the, what's in the brackets for my last step, all right? So here's what we're going to do. We want to get rid of this 3 first, okay? And that way we can deal with what's in the bracket second. So all we're going to do, and this is actually nice and simple, for our first step, we are just going to divide this side of the equation by 3. Because you see here we're multiplying x minus 8 by 3, so the reverse of that, or the opposite of that, must be to divide this by 3. So here I'm multiplying x minus 8 by 3 and then dividing by 3, which means that those cancel, those 3's cancel out, which is exactly what I want. But of course, whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I also have to do the right side of the equation. So I'm going to divide this side of the equation by 3 as well. That's step 1. Alright, so I'm going to draw what I have now. So now I have x minus 8 equals negative 45 divided by 3. Negative 45 divided by 3 is negative 15. All right? So one problem we have now, um, and this is something that I don't want you guys to get confused by, is the fact that these brackets are there. They shouldn't, at this point, they don't need to be there because the only equation we're doing on the left side is x minus 8. So we don't really need these brackets. So what I'm going to do is actually just erase them so that they don't confuse you uh, by the fact that they're there. And whenever I can find my erase tool, there we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to erase. I said we're going to erase. It's not letting me erase. Well, never mind. We're going to keep the brackets for now. But you don't technically need them. I could just have x minus 8 equals negative 15. Oh, I really wish I could get rid of those brackets. I don't know why they won't go away. I'm sitting here puzzling over it, and I'm getting nothing. Anyway, I'm actually going to rewrite it because it's bothering me so much. It's not even letting me undo. All right, so we have x minus 8 equals negative 15. Now, all we have to do is nice and simple. We just need to get rid of this minus 8. So to get rid of that minus 8, what we're going to do is add 8 to both sides, or to this side anyway, which gets those to cancel out. And now we just have to add 8 to this side. All right. So what we're left with when all is said and done, negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. And if I go back to my original equation, I have negative 7 for x, Minus 8 is negative 15, times 3 is negative 45. So my equation worked out just great. So again, just to recap, the first step is actually not to do what's in the brackets, because we're following reverse order of operations. So instead, what we're going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3, or whatever number is out here. And then we're going to just get rid of the whatever we're or adding or subtracting from x, and that's going to solve our equation for us. There's one other way to solve these types of questions. We're going to look at it on our next slide here. All right. There's another way to solve these that may or may not be more comfortable for you. 
Um, and that's up to you to decide. I'm not going to uh, force you to do it one way or the other. But the way that we're going to solve these is called the distributive property. And the way the distributive property works is kind of odd. What it's saying is that if I'm doing 4 times x plus 2, that's going to be exactly the same. Or if I add x plus 2 first and then multiply it by 4, that's going to be exactly the same as 4 times x plus 4 times 2 which sounds really weird. But really what it's saying to do here is before you start solving the equation, you multiply 4 times x, and then you multiply 4 times 2. All right, so I'm going to do that right now for you. So I end up with 4x plus 8 equals 20. So I haven't started doing any algebra yet. The only thing I've done is taken that 4 that's outside the brackets and multiply it by x plus 2. Now, this equation that I get stuck with is exactly the same as an ax plus b equals c equation that we're more familiar with. So all this step is doing is getting this equation here to look like an equation we've done before. All right, and we know how to solve these equations. It's exactly the same as we always do. The first thing we need to do is get rid of this plus 8. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. All right, and so those cancel out. And these ones we have to deal with in a second. So what I'm left with is 4x equals 20 minus 8 is neg or sorry, is not negative 12. I don't know why it's not letting me undo things. Anyway, uh, 4x equals 12. And now all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 4. And what I'm left with is that x equals 3. All right. So we call this rule that we did up here the distributive property. And all it's saying is that um, rather than do x then treat this x plus 2 and this 4 separately, I can actually just multiply them first and then solve the equation like normal. All right. Uh, we'll go over this a little bit more in class if this confuses you, because it is a bit of a weird concept, but it sets us up really nicely because then you don't have to learn, you know, a fifth way of trying to solve an equation. Um, we actually just change the equation to make it one that we're more familiar with. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful. We will go over this in class uh, on Friday or possibly Monday, depending on how things go. Um, but feel free to rewatch this video again and again and again because I know that I'm so popular and you love listening to the sound of my voice. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see most of you in about 15 minutes when class starts. All right, we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.